Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? So tell me exactly what we got here. So this is a cannon, shoots a 40 millimeter. So where'd you get this? My husband and I are in a cannon club. So you fire cannons for fun? Yes. You're definitely my kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a 40 millimeter cannon that I'm looking to sell. This cannon has been in the family for a long time. It was part of a cannon club that my father-in-law and his brother started, and it got passed down to my husband and I. I would like $25,000 for this cannon. This is incredible. So in the 70s and the 80s, guys started building these things, and cannon clubs became really, really popular. They would take like old barrels from military stuff, and if you're really good in a machine shop and a really good welder, you can just turn it into a cannon and legally fire it. So what can you tell me about this one? It was my father-in-law's. Used to be on a deck carriage, which was on the ground. When he passed away, my husband put the wheels on it and had it assembled. OK. It looks like he did a hell of a job. I love how he made the carriage. It's all solid oak. It's a lot of hard work. Did he make the cannon? I'm not sure about the cannon. I know he was a machinist, but whether he built it or not, I am not aware. All right. Um, it looks like a military barrel on there. The great thing about them is they're rifled. You know, some of the old cannons from like the 1800s and before that, there was no rifling in it. At 100 yards, it might shoot eight feet that way, 10 feet that way, that way, that way. Once they figured out an efficient way of putting rifling in, they shoot a lot straighter. Have you shot this one? Yes, most recently about a month ago. What's the farthest you've hit a target? Just under 200 yards. That's impressive. How much do you want for it? I'm thinking like 25,000. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, can we go shoot it? No, I don't have time to go shoot it. I love everything about it. You, you got a military barrel. Someone looks like they've done some amazing welding and some machine work on this. But I just really like to fire it before I bought it. Would you take 15? No, 15's too low. 20,000? 17? 18? Well, I know a guy who would love this, so I'm willing to risk it. I'll do 18. OK. Let's go inside, and um, we'll do some paperwork. I'll get you paid. Awesome. Thank you. And hopefully, this deal doesn't blow up in my face. <laughs> you ready to blow something up? Uh, yeah. All right, you grab the sticks, I'll grab the box. I'm out here in the desert with Chum, and we're gonna meet up with our friend Ron, and we're gonna see if this thing fires, and hopefully, I didn't just blow 18,000 bucks. Hey, Ron, how's it going? Hey, Rick, how's it going, buddy? Got all the implements of destruction right here. OK. So what do you think of this thing? I think it's a really nice piece, solidly built, good frame, good carriage. It's got a military-grade barrel on it. It's from a 40-millimeter Bofors. What's a Bofors? Bofors was uh, an anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapon. Well, I mean, it's got a rifled barrel, so I'm assuming it shoots pretty straight. Oh, yeah. That's that's the thing about a Bofors. Bofors were rifled barrels. So that's what makes this better than most black powder cannons. Most black powders are smooth bore, and they're out and go anywhere. This one's going to be on point. OK. So I bought it for 18000 you know, because I thought I could flip it real quick. As it sits right here, that, that's a fair price as long as it works. We'll load it up, and then you can fire it. That's what I'm here for. Well, let's do it. Let's go. I'm going to load the black pattern here first. We set a whole bunch of targets downrange. They are ammo crates and a decent-sized target. So if the cannon is true, it should hit the target. If the cannon doesn't fire, uh, I think you spent a lot of money for a nice yard piece. All right, you guys ready? Ready. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Here we go. <laughs> Check that out, right <laughs> on point, boys. It's still fun every time one of these things go off. So what do you think, Ron? Did my boss do a good job? It's, it's a solid piece. We know it works. This thing didn't have much recoil. Everything looks good. Nothing's moved on it. So how much do you think this is worth? I would put a price tag at 25000 Cool, that's a quick little profit. <laughs> but what is that? What? That's my D-30. It's a direct, indirect, anti-tank artillery gun. 
an anti-tank gun. Well, it's used for both. If you're close combat, you can take out tanks with it, but if there's troops down range, you raise the barrel and it turns into an artillery piece. How far does it shoot? Uh, that one is 12 miles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you boys want to check it out? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's um, kind of cooler than my cannon. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is pretty... <laughs> Pretty what? It's pretty amazing. Pretty terrifying, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'll go with pretty terrifying. So what exactly is this? It's a Russian D-30 122-millimeter gun. It was developed back in the 70s. The Soviets were in a period where they weren't building too many tanks, too many cannons, and they needed something that would do both. So as you rise this barrel, it has a 12-mile distance as long range. But if you have a tank coming up on you, you drop the barrel, and it turns into an anti-tank gun. OK. So how in the world did you get this thing? We've had to go to a couple different uh, museums, finding ones that were torn apart, scrapped. And once we got the pieces put together, we had to register with the federal government. And now we're here shooting it. So customers can come out here and pay you and shoot this thing? They do all the time. Can we shoot this thing? Let me ask my boys. You want to come down and get this thing loaded from a friend here? Roger. So we can shoot it? Yes, sir. We just got done with a client, so we still have a shell. We still have some powder left. How loud is it? <sighs> It'll stop your heart. It'll stop it. <laughs> It still scares me. I like standing way back when this thing fires. So how much gunpowder is behind? That's a big shell. Yeah, it's a 28-pound projectile, and we're going to load in six pounds of powder. Oh, wow. And we have an M35A2 deuce and a half truck down range. A decent-sized target. All right, Rick, safety first. Back up and put your ear protection on. OK, I got my earplugs in. I'm ready. Three, two, one. When you say it stops your heart, it stops your heart. You said it stopped your heart, but my heart is beating like 10 times faster than normal. Whew. <laughs> it was pretty damn cool. Thanks, man. It's been amazing as usual. Yes, sir. All right, you know why I brought you. Fired the gun? No, to help me load the cannon in the truck. Come on. Did I tell you my knee's starting to hurt? Take it easy, gentlemen. <laughs>